Did we start too early? Start what? The show. I don't think so. Okay. Good. No worries. I thought we, if anything, we started too late. Oh, okay. I was, um, I was just, I was in charge of the, the timing of the opening and I was just, it started before I was ready for it to start. Oh, I wasn't expecting it to start then. Okay, but it's fine. It's fine. Tech blip. Right. Yeah. So we are no strangers to tech things. Anyway, so for those of you who haven't joined us before, Vera and Adrian are our real names. Yeah. Yes. We have known each other for a long time. We tend to gig live and make stuff together live and separately. But, you know, now we are in lockdown. Uh, I'm not a mime. So what we're doing is meeting weekly and just chatting. And this week is food week. We go Yay. through books, films and TV, green stuff and then music and then food i had to look at my cheat sheet there uh right okay and we have a special guest today joining us at 7 40 his name is vic sivalingam and <laughs> sorry i always laugh because his name is naughty <laughs> um but we'll get back to that so if uh if you're watching this while you're at home please feel free to move around this is kind of like radio we're just going to be chatting and sharing some stuff and like anything we refer to we'll post the links down um below the youtube video after after the show is live so you don't need to worry about anything also we'll do this we'll do like a quick hello check-in and then we'll interview our guest at 7 40 for about 20 minutes mm -hmm. and down the side of your youtube um uh screen you can chat to us and send us questions which we will largely ignore until eight o'clock and then we'll answer your questions and um address your concerns if you have any um cool that's pretty much it there's no content warning this week i don't think no somebody no. might accidentally swear but we're not planning to I never plan to swear. It, there's no content Ooh. this week. Tech blip. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Double tech. I'm having a problem with that. Uh, I am so sweaty today. I apologize. Um, <laughs> just to jump <laughs> into the check-in. I am hot and sweaty. I think we're all hot and sweaty. I am wearing a plastic outfit. Oof. Um, that was a I, bad choice back in whenever we started doing this. We started doing this in February, March. It was cooler then. Yeah, but you, yeah, perhaps you should have thought ahead. Perhaps I you could both life. have thought ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, art, Adrian, it's art. Yeah. Remember when we used to walk on stages and it was hot and we would have to just carry on? Yes, yeah, so we would just deal with it. Mm -hmm. I do remember. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll stop I wine. remember like little personal reminiscence I remember yeah. being in a show that some friends made um I was only there kind of on sufferance I, I it was an object theater show and I was the back leg of this donkey so, okay so explain to people what object theater is oh so uh basically puppetry it shows it's um theater involving objects the manipulation of objects so it's quite broad. <laughs> my moustache is not behaving. <laughs> so what I'm doing with my moustache is kind of object theatre right now. Um, so yeah, it's like at one end, like it can just be puppets. I'm or it can get be... lots of angry letters from object theatre practitioners. Yes, yes, and yeah, probably. Okay. Um, but this was this was a show that was kind of it was a puppet show, but using everyday objects. So I had this um, poker 
that I had to use as the back leg of this donkey. It did have two legs, but then it loses a leg very early in the show. So then I'm just responsible for one leg. <laughs> um, and I had to, I was, it, um, I was all dressed in black with long sleeves and a roll neck uh, and then a hood and a hat and gloves. So Why do you have to wear a hat my... if you're already wearing a hood? Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess my whole head is covered is what I mean. Okay. I don't remember exactly what the components were. Maybe right. it was a mask and a hat. Okay, okay. I don't know. But the point is I had to be invisible and I have very pale skin. So I would have obviously shown up. We were all very pale skinned. Um, and we were in Avignon, which is in the south of France in July. And it was incredibly hot. And for an oh. hour a day, I had to be in this, all this, these clothes. Yeah. Um, bent over being the back of this donkey. And so was awesome. it the Avignon Festival? It was at the fringe, yeah, the, what they call the Avignon Off, which is their fringe, their major fringe festival. It's the equivalent of the Edinburgh Fringe Festival mm. in France. Um, it was a wonderful month. It was a very exciting experience to be there. Uh, but yeah, just so hot. It was incredibly <laughs> just hot is, the, is what I remember. I um I remember performing at the Regent's Park Theatre and mm. but they were the daytime shows in summer. And Outdoors. Yes, but for kids and like I mean a lot of what I mean is like a lot of school kids came along in like groups and they were just like were just in serious danger of like throwing up fainting or like you know, it was just oh, no. too hot. Yes. You're just sitting there with like no cover. Um, I mean, it's a really nice thing to sort of be outdoors and enjoying a bit of performance. But on the um, right day, it's a lovely experience. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and yes, I I wasn't wearing too many, too much costume. But okay. you were jumping around though. I remember seeing that show. Yeah, we I did have to like our stage manager made sure we wore um, sunblock in case you know right. sunstroke and things like that. So thank you to stage managers out there. Yes, looking after us all the time. Yes. Um, right, so do we have like a little, how are you Adrian? I was oh. going to say like a conversation starter, but the conversation has started. It already started. The conversation starter this week was the weather. <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I mean, I can, I didn't actually, uh, I haven't prepared my conversational prompts, which is just, again, it's, it's, me not being prepared it's not oh gosh no like okay everyone i was asleep till 5 15 this afternoon i think it's very important to um not feel sort of bound to i capitalist ideas of being productive all the time yeah and i grew up in malaysia where like in between tv programs you would have these songs going be productive members of society really oh yeah Wow. And things like information technology is the way forward, you know, like maybe yeah. better tunes, um, but that kind of uh, messaging. And this propaganda. Uh, those words did not come out of my mouth, but. <laughs> That's basically what it is though, isn't it? I'm like, who's monitoring this show? Now I want to go be able to go back to Malaysia. And oh, visit my family. yeah, okay. You don't, so don't, I didn't so you don't need to agree or disagree with what I said. No, no. <laughs> um, but, um, <laughs> but I remember, I think it was a blog post that you sent me years ago by Alex, I want to say Swift, Swift about yeah. how we, freelancers are so held by this thing of like, we have to work 40 hours mm -hmm. a week. And that's not even true in terms of like, even if you wanted to carry on like being uh i guess capitalist society you wouldn't mm. have to work 40 hours a week in order to to produce the output yes yes uh, i just it, yeah. i guess it keeps people in place like it keeps people in the office and doing things and not getting up to mischief exactly i mean partly like some of it comes from the the shift that came at the industrial revolution didn't it where before if you're working in the fields, you know how much work you have to do because you have to plant or you have to harvest or you have to win yeah. or whatever the task is. But when you're making pins, there is no end to making pins. There's always a need for pins. So there's no intuitive moment when you can leave the factory and go home and feel like your work is done. Um, 
And also, I think, that, I think, I think that there is an end to making pins. Not really, because you can just make another one, and then another. No, one, but like the world one. doesn't need pins. That the world doesn't need an infinite number of pins. It's an idea that we just. Oh, need pins. yeah. Okay. But and you're that, not, in your factory in eighteen whatever or seventeen whatever, you're not going to get to that point. You're never going to make as many. Right. Pins if your factory is in eighteen hundreds, no. Yeah. So um, that's when this that's when this working week comes in, because you have to give people a reason to come in and do the work. So you pay them exactly. over a, for a certain number of hours rather than paying them for the work that needs to be done. Is the point. Wouldn't it be interesting if we like took out building obsolescence? So we would mm -hmm. have to keep would be like, OK, we need six million pins. Of yeah. Them. And then once we made those, because they're going to last forever. Now we have to make other things. Right. And that's quite exciting to go. I mean, it'd be a different way of controlling people to go like, and now we make something else, and this is your ration, and then if it's broken, then tough. Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't know what like what that fits into politically, but that's super interesting. I think that's just showing me up again as being very pro totalitarianism. Uh huh. Yeah. You want the government to say. This is how it's done. I, I can't shake this thing about me, but I don't have to because it's 20 to eight. And we're <laughs> going to bring on our guest, Vic Um, So tell us a little bit about Vic, Adrian. Uh, Vic, well, I met Vic when we did that show, the, um, I was going to say the murder of Tintagel. What was that called? <laughs> the death of Tintagel. <laughs> yeah, the death of Tintagel. Um, in written by Peter uh, Morris. Written by Peter Morris, two thousand and ten. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I remember, I think that's when I founded Salt Peter. That's when we started doing monthly, um, what people might call cabaret and variety shows. Right. Yeah. Uh, where okay. is Nick? Vic, tell yeah, Vic, us. Join us, join us. <laughs> I've a bit directed the death of Tintagel, and that's when Sorry, I, we met. Hi, Vic. Hello. Can you see me? Yes. yes. Can we can see I, I, I can't see myself, which is quite maybe useful. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. No? Yeah, anyway. Uh, hello. How are you guys? Really Hot. glad that you were able to join us, because the last yes. time we tried to have you on, like, all the tech fail happened <gasps> at the same time. Yeah, we had just a, we had a mayor, as people used to say when I was at university. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was going to dress up because I you know I I, I got the little email saying oh uh, you know theatre director. So I thought what can I do to be a theatre director? <laughs> I, thought, I, I thought I know what I'd do. I'd wear a hat like oh, that, nice. and then uh, you know what's more theatre director like if you don't have a scarf to throw over your shoulder? Oh my <laughs> god. You know, okay, except so, yeah, that little... it's really, really warm. So I might, I, I, I might, okay. I might, you know, I might. You, you do look exactly like Peter Brook looked when I saw him. <laughs> the only time I saw him, he was wearing a hat like that and a scarf, just carelessly tossed over his shoulder. <laughs> but Vic, Vic, how I remember you as a director is like leaning back in the chair with your glasses down your nose. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's Definitely terrible, isn't it? No, no, yeah. no. Yeah, I it's, love it. it's what it is. It's 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 uh, it's purely practical. I mean, now it sits better because I actually need it. But you know, there was that point where, as you as your eyesight starts to fail and your arm gets not long enough to hold the book, <laughs> you know, so then you've got to have glasses. But I I can't see the work that's happening in front of me if I got my glasses on. Right. So now it's, now you know it's fine. <laughs> so. You just look old, really. I went, I went through a phase. I went through a phase of going, oh, my arm's not long enough. Oh, I know what. If I put it on the table and I stood up, then it was the right height to still see. So oh. I was directing for a while without that. And then when that, you, when I couldn't do that, then I had to You look very it. dynamic as a, st a standing director. That's a very dynamic yes. pose. <laughs> yes, you, know, you have That's standing it. desk and standing yes. meetings in the corporate world. And so you're... Yeah the standing director i love it i know i i, I you know i i was a trendsetter what can i say yeah what's all this directing from behind tables nonsense yes exactly. <laughs> yeah i know i know come on yeah the side it's of the table at least 
they can like rest their head in their hands. Like, why am I there at <laughs> I think I think that that's, uh, those directors are afraid of actors. So yeah, when they it's, sit it's, behind the table. Yeah, I think so. I think that they're, they're, that's putting a barrier between you and the actor. I think. Yeah, it also means that they can type. Like in my experience, directors type in their laptops nowadays while they you're do. acting. Yes, they Which do. Which sometimes makes me feel like they're not watching because they're just frantically typing, and I'm like, I'd like you to see what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, you know, and now and again would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, glance in my direction. <laughs> but hey ho, you know, different different strokes, I suppose. Exactly. I remember Vera, while we're spilling the beans on directing style, when you uh -oh. directed me in 1999, mm -hmm. Can You, tell the liar? Mm. Um, you oh. had a huge notebook. Yes. You pasted things in, and I think you sat on the floor. Yes. Which was really nice. Like there was no power differential there wow very cozy yeah see no that that just made life difficult sitting on the floor i find you know, i can't sit on work. the floor for very long i get yeah. so uncomfortable yeah. well you see i i picked up that so on one side of the book was the script and on the other side was a blank page that i could write on right and i learned that from watching other directors oh ah. do you know what i mean so you can like write notes along because like if you're holding an actual published script there's no space to make notes no. yeah yeah well i mean i i think i started off doing writing copious amounts of notes and then very quickly realized that if i can't remember the note afterwards it probably wasn't important enough to give correct i think yeah. i would feel like that too yes yeah uh, or i'm just lazy i don't know yeah. no, you, I think you right. boil everything down you had Three rules? How many rules yeah, do you have? Ooh. Five rules? Five, I think, yeah. But, well, there, there's a basis of five. Okay. And then, the, and then you know, yeah. Right. Oh, no, and then everything goes up and down. Um, you always look at the person speaking. Yes. Uh, you only move on your own line. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is, uh, when you're talking about your character's motivations and needs, uh, there's a moratorium on the, on the words like, kind of, just, sort of, maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't remember that rule. That's, I don't remember ooh, that you know, one. that's oh, a new yeah, rule. That's, that's, that's my drama school it. rule, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like I'm kind of like just maybe kind of in love with him. <laughs> are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? <laughs> you that know, makes sense. So. Yeah, you need clarity. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. You, can't, you can't play an action if you if, if you have no clarity. Yeah, you kind of yeah. love someone, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's right. My thought. Yeah. Oh, no Hollywood huff. No Hollywood what? Hollywood huff. Ask me how I am, Vera. How are you, babe? <sighs> <laughs> or, or I should call it the uh, the uh, Ambridge huffs because they, I, I'm sure you could take about uh, two minutes off of um, the arches <laughs> if, if they cut, the, if they cut uh, right. the huffs out, you know. Do you think yeah, the huff is in the script? I don't know. I think, I think it's become a character thing, potentially. I mean, I'm not a fan, mm -hmm. but uh, for some reason, when I was working up in Birmingham, I would always drive back and I would always catch the omnibus on the Sunday. It seemed mm -hmm. to, I seemed to always tune, uh, uh, tune into that and to Gardening Times or Gardener's World or whatever that, that program oh, is. Oh, yes, but, Gardener's World, yeah. Yeah, neither of which have, have any, you know, I have any love for necessarily. But, you know, you're driving, so what, what else are you going to do? <laughs> yes. Wait, 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 okay. So, do you think the Huffs um that the because it's radio that they were asked to huff because i've had this recollection that i've been told directed to like put in oh yeah, yeah. Those bits i i i wonder i wonder whether that that is a thing i i did i just do think about it but i suppose yeah I audible think emotion. because i yeah, I guess because I only do theatre more than, mm. you know, I haven't really directed for for any other medium. I think the words do the work for you. I feel like yeah. if you've half, yeah. then you don't I don't need, need to you. listen. Yeah. You've already, you, you're already in the, in the, you know, in the little example that we just did, you already knew I'm not feeling great. So I don't need to tell you, oh, no, I don't feel well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or, or it's, or it's manipulative because I'm, I'm, I, I go, 
I'm all right. You know, so then it's then it's character based. I don't know. I don't know. That, but you could probably. I mean, I love I love listening to audio. I haven't uh, done very much audio drama, um, yeah. but I, I would imagine you could put a lot of that into the into the delivery of the text. That's one of the like you can essentialize all of that, can't you? Because Completely. God is what people listen to, so you can put a lot inside just a yeah. A, a I, I think I think so, but then I mean I guess I need to do it and then find out right and then see. Uh, or like the yeah. other thing that I was thinking is maybe what the problem is that the huff becomes a cliche in itself, and so the huff yeah. is not necessarily the problem, but it's that it's the go-to emotional sound. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love no, that. you're right. I think it it be, it becomes the the clutch. Right. You know, uh, or, yeah. or or becomes yeah. Uh, although it's really interesting, I suppose, because. I, I do remember a theatre director once saying that when they started doing radio, it was so much easier because oh. you could direct people in the way that you maybe always wanted to, which is, can you do that faster? Can you, can you, uh, that, that's the important word in that line, which you would never do in a, in, yes. when you're directing theatre or, or at least it's, it's not helpful to do that, I don't think, it's, you know, whereas you can mm -hmm. hear because all you're doing is listening to it. And so, and, mm -hmm. and for some reasons, the actor goes, oh, okay. And, and because it's time limited, I suppose, you know, whereas yeah. in rehearsals, and, uh, there is a different interfacing with an audience. So uh, in, a, in a piece of mm -hmm. theater. Um, so I think it is right that we create the space for, for the actors to find it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But I really appreciate, I, I struggled hugely when you directed us to the whole sort of like, look at the, no, because I'd never been told these things. Like you can well, only walk when you're speaking. It was yeah. such, but, but I, was such but a I, difficult I, thing to do <laughs> at the time. But, but, but yeah. I suppose I always say, uh, you know, the rules are meant to be broken. Of course, yes. So, so the, the, the point I, I guess I'm making is that sometimes we do things out of habit mm -hmm. uh, rather than necessity. So if you choose to break the rule, then you're making that a choice. Yes. The character or you, the actor, is making that choice for the character. So yeah. if you do not look at the person who's speaking at you, then you're telling a story. And yes. for me, right, then, right. are you telling the right story is, is, mm -hmm. is important. Yes, but, and know. one of my, the key uh, takeaway from Vic philosophy in general is, it, is it helpful? So like mm -hmm. on and off stage, I go, well, why are we having this conversation or this discussion or whatever? And like, when people sort of discuss really big philosophical conceptual things, I'm like, is this helpful? <laughs> like, um, what's an example? Uh, I suppose anything to do with religion, like that does God exist? I'm like, well, I'm happy to talk about it, but I want to know what the practical, what your what practical outcome you're heading yes. towards that's going to have like a, uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, yes, exactly. I suppose I I just go from the point of view, but how does it help you play that line, mm -hmm. uh, knowing about religion? You know, and if it does, great. Let's find out about it. But sometimes I think it, it's it's it, I think it's what you said a moment ago. It's essentializing what what that moment's about. You know, in order that the actor can own it enough to to go, okay, I can come on and listen to what you're saying and respond to that without having this, you know, uh, tombs in my head about you know all the religions of the world and having to somehow bring my research to the part as opposed mm. to I just need to tell you that you're being a dick. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's on the board. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. Anatomical language. I think it's anatomical right. references to body parts. Yes, that's right. I think yes, we should right, be able right. to deal with anatomical references. I wanted to make a clarification that um, when you, uh, just in case people don't know, Vic, earlier when you said you called the omnibus, you didn't mean the omnibus theatre um, that hosts us doing this show. You meant the omnibus of the Arches, which happens. Does it still happen I on did. a Sunday? I think it does. Yes, I think it yeah. does. I, although I haven't, um, I haven't driven now for a while because I don't have a car anymore. Because I, I now work in London primarily, as opposed to in the regions as I used to. So, uh, so yes, I gave up my car. So mm -hmm. I can't. Yes. So I haven't turned on the radio on around the time when yes. it would happen. I think so. I would like to uh, confess that I do not know what the word omnibus means. Uh, having. <laughs> But you don't need to tell me now. I would like to slightly steer this to talk yes. about food, food because it's food week. It's food. 
three. <laughs> and I wanted to, the reason, well, I mean, we've already mentioned in past episodes that Malaysians have this like relationship with food, but initially, um, I wanted to speak to Vic about, I think you, you were very comforting. You told me you once made a pie or something with salt and oh, no. sugar. Yeah, it was, it was an apple crumble. Right. Ooh, a salty apple crumble. It was disgusting. Ooh, okay. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and, it, and it wouldn't clump together because obviously it wasn't sugar. <laughs> But it was in a big rush, and we were like, "Oh my god, we're gonna make, go make this, go make it, and, you know, and drop it in." And it was terrible. But what was so, it for? Uh, oh, just some friends coming over for dinner, and and we were like, "Oh well, you know, <laughs> not that I am English, but you know, it's it's pudding, so you know, I quite like pudding." So um, I thought, "Oh well, let's do it." I, this was in in the Netherlands. This was my friends and I, and you know, and they were, and I was like, "Well, tell me how to do it, and I'll do it," and you know, and then dropped. <laughs> Salt in. Help me it's how very, to do it. To, how to do it. I'm pudding, Nick. <laughs> no, right. To my, you know, I, in my defense, it was very fine salt that looked like caster sugar and felt <laughs> like caster sugar. Uh huh. Uh huh. And yeah. I mean, I think in an unknown kitchen, Vic, I might have like just had a little finger taste, finger test. You must yeah, be very but, confident that it was sugar. Uh, well, I guess. I guess I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. But hang on a second, I'm already so um, impressed that you just go. I'll just make an apple crumble really quickly, yeah. and like, because I would be like, I'm not a baker, so like, I would know. I would like look at all the things and like measure things out. So I'm imagining a person who like bakes a lot, and you're just like throwing things in. You know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, 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 I enjoy Jeff. baking. Yeah, I like baking a lot, and I've baked. Uh, my mom used to like baking, so you know, uh, in 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 um, anticipation of the reward of licking the spoon in the bowl, oh, I used yeah. to help her. So mm -hmm. you know, and so I learned quite early on to bake. So I'm I'm quite I'm, I'm not an amazing baker in that like they're not amazing uh, um, creations with blah blah blah, but I can make some really good cake. Why have I not had any of this cake? Yeah, it's been a while. It's just, you know, I've, I've been doing quite a lot of baking in, in lockdown. You know, I mean, what have you been baking? Quite, well, I, I started baking lots of cake and then I thought I'm getting, I'm eating far too much. So I started baking some keto rolls. So they are, oh, yeah, uh, so they are low carb rolls with uh, almond flour and coconut flour, and they're brilliant because they each roll is only about two carbs as opposed to thirty carbs. For is it tasty though? It was. It is the best rolls I've had. No, uh, the best roll of uh, the best keto rolls I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, you see that? That's a meaningless <laughs> statement. Is it tasty? <laughs> It is tasty. It is actually tasty, but it's quite filling because it's it's heavy, it's heavy. Almond flour is mm. much heavier, you know, than and there's no gluten in it, so it, it's different. Right. But um, but it was the best of the lot. I've tried a few because you know I I love <laughs> bread. I mm. mean, come on, Malaysians and their roti canai. Wait, know, no, 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 no! I don't accept this. I love <laughs> roti canai. Yeah. I don't love bread. Oh no, I love bread. I'm, I've always loved bread. But also, I have a question. Like, it's so unusual to me that someone from Malaysia of your mom's generation was baking because Malaysia is a hot country. Not everyone has like ovens. Yeah. And desserts no. are normally like not interesting. Not like yeah. cakey, bready things. So how come no. your mom was like baking? I don't know. I I don't know. And you know, it was just really interesting. And this was she she must have done it all. I I suppose. People had home economics in, yes. in, you know, when, you know, and certainly uh, I guess it was half so sexist because the boys never did it. We did woodwork in school. So, you know, obviously the girls all had to do home economics. Mm. Uh, but in my mom's time, I think that was, that was probably something that just happened and they, they would have learned to do stuff. So maybe she learned it uh, at school and liked it. Right. So it was like a British um, thing. Yeah, yes, of course, you know, and then when she came to uh, visit her, her sister was, uh, you know, my aunt, um, when my cousin was born, my mom came for about two months to just be with my, her sister and, you know, um, and take care of her and, and help her out with the child and all of that. Um, she then did a, a baking course while she was here for the two months that she was here. Oh so, my gosh. I know, so she was always interested in, in, mm. in doing, my mom's, a, my mom's a great cook. 
she's one of those people who can just kind of rustle something up even though even though there's nothing at home oh mm-hmm. that's so magical yeah yeah no she's quite she's quite special um so, so it's quite difficult to cook anything she cooks right you know it all it always tastes them not the same i can i've always loved the idea of just like throwing open some cupboards and going what do we have and then <clears throat> creating something yeah Amazing. but she, she also has she also has five of us five kids so and oh, we used wow. to live in these we used to live in this block of flats where the shops were downstairs and my mum would start cooking and then yell from the <laughs> kitchen oh i don't have this and then she'll just <laughs> rattle off all of our names one after the other and mm. someone will run down to get it and as you come back up she'll go i forgot this uh, you know so you you're constantly going up and down to so it wasn't always and there's nothing in the <laughs> That's nice. It's like pretty good. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that picture. It would make such a nice mm-hmm. film of like the kids running up and down five five stories. Did you say five, four stories, five of us. <laughs> it is a little bit like um, it's a bit like boot soup. Um, you know the story where the person is like they 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 rock up somewhere and and the woman who owns the cottage says, I don't have anything for you to eat. And the person says, oh, that's right, because I have a boot. We can just make boot soup. And then gradually is going, oh, do you know what would be good with this boot would be an onion. And the woman's like, oh, I have an onion. It's <laughs> a bit like that. Like you started off telling us that your mum just like threw open the cupboards. And then it's like, yeah, OK. But also, and then she's like, oh, my five children. Yes. Go fetch she, ingredients. She, 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 she used all the resources she had. <laughs> Yeah, including, including the empty cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. So wh- while we have you, we've got some questions for you from mm. uh, from the general public. What What is your favorite food to have on stage? On stage. Uh, what does um, from GS mean? I don't know. From Sorry, I'm just reading out some the typed out questions. I don't know. What's your favorite food to have on stage? I've never been on stage uh, in uh, as an actor long in, I, I, I rephrase. I haven't, I wasn't an actor for very long, so I didn't actually get to eat very much on stage. The only <laughs> time I ever did have anything on stage was disgusting. What um, was I it? Played, I played Trigorin in, in a production of The Seagull and um, there's a scene where I'm eating something and they gave me potatoes out of a can and some ham and it was just oh. nasty and you know so you just moved it around the the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the table quite a lot uh, but when I did some work I, I spent a few years um, uh, with the Royal Shakespeare Company uh, and they did a, a play that you saw Vera, a grain store it was, an, yes, it was a new yes. uh, Russian play and it was about the uh, you know the, the kind of the holodomo which is the the, um, uh, the, the Ukrainian you know um, uh, famine and all of that and uh, there was a scene where they had a lot of food and we were sponsored by a very famous and large um, supermarket chain uh, that Ooh. brought all this amazing food plus pierogi you know um so yeah so the actors and some of the uh, the audience members were invited on stage to eat so i i looked at that with a little bit of you know jealousy but no so so favorite food to eat on stage wow i mean come on it, it has to be cake <laughs> the problem with cake. cake on stage though is that oh i don't know how you're body reacts but when I'm on stage my mouth is often very dry so if I have to eat anything like cake or bread or biscuits uh, it's a real challenge yes, cake would be yes, particularly no, exactly. difficult yeah well, it's, 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 if, it's, if it's a nice moist cake you'll yes. be okay yeah, so <laughs> yeah that's true uh yeah so so any food really is, is good I think but I don't know I don't know what it'd be like for your your co-stars depending on what you've got to do with them well, Adrian was in this incredible show where there was food all over and... Oh my word, we didn't over. eat any of it. Oh yeah. no, why? It was that kind of part of the... Um, the show was partly about excess and waste. Um, mm-hmm. And so the food was, was kind of spectacle. Um, and it was overwhelming, like there was just right. so much food on, on the stage and we threw it yeah. around and we played with it and it was it was kind of gross and disgusting and yeah really so um but i suppose that was a point yes exactly yeah 
exactly. Yeah, gosh. Um, but I didn't enjoy it. Like we got, we had milk poured on us and we had to walk on cornflakes and I didn't enjoy that. I don't like being no. uncomfortable. Yeah, I was in no, another I... show where we cooked instant, well, somebody, one of the actors cooked instant pasta and we all sat down and ate. And we had to, like the scene finished when we finished the meal. And that were like, some days there was just, the, the servings were very unevenly distributed. <laughs> And that was, it was horrible. It was so disgusting. The pasta. Was it good pasta? Actually. No. Was it What's good that? pasta or not? Was it good pasta? No, it was horrible. Oh, it was, was just it meant it was, to be horrible. Well, it was just supposed to be easy. Ah, um, you okay. just like, you basically, it was this thing where you rip the packet open, pour it into a saucepan, add some water, and five minutes later, it's done. Oh, you know? wow. Except that sometimes it wasn't quite done, so it was also very hard. Some wait, days. wait, wait. <laughs> Hang on. If it came out of a packet, why was it like any any of an amount? Oh, it would go into the saucepan and then the actor who was cooking then served it out. Oh, ah, I see. Right. Right, right, so right. if he had a grudge against you, you yeah, exactly. very little of it or a lot, depending a on lot. how bad. No, okay. Maybe the punishment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, we, what is, uh, hang on, another question. Oh, uh, uh, how do you make an apple crumble? How do you make an apple crumble? Where well, you cut up some, you chop up some apples, and you put it in a pan, <laughs> uh, in, in, into a dish, uh, and then, I mean, you slice it, I suppose, if, you know. What Vera yeah, didn't that explain is that um, that was the setup for a joke bit <laughs> from, from Gloria Sanders. Oh. She's commented on the live stream. <laughs> How do you make an apple crumble indeed? <laughs> oh, Wait, the, uh, and dreams. <laughs> I know, here I was sharing my family recipe, yeah. you know, sent, nurtured down with the, with, with the, with the uh, special Sibylingum thing of salt instead of sugar. Yeah. yeah. I feel but robbed. Don't worry, everyone, we'll post the Sibylingum secret online. <laughs> I think we may have let, it out, let the cat out of the bag already. <laughs> um, are you keeping your beard post lockdown because people are digging it? Oh, they are Ooh. digging your beard. These are, so these, um, these are questions from people who are like joining us, who have been joining us. Uh, I might, I guess. Yeah, no, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a really interesting one because I used to always have a beard, but obviously I've got much more gray in my beard than I ever did. But I used to always have a beard because I used to wear a, a, a baseball cap all the time. And then it was a real easy way of uh, not shaving. But then since I started, mm -hmm. you know, shaving my head then it felt like my head was turned upside down when I kept a full beard <laughs> um, so uh so I stopped doing that uh but then lockdowns has given me the uh you know the sort of opportunity to just grow it and I realized that I could spend half the time shaving so I might keep it because of that so it, it's at that space way it's a little bit you know is it right do you like wax it and trim it oh god no it? no no that that's too much work Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, I think oh, low sorry, maintenance. Oh, nice. maintenance, low maintenance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So our final question for today: Why do actors always have fake food on TV and movies? Wouldn't they perform much better over an excellent meal? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's there, there may be many reasons for that. One could be health and safety. If it's on, if mm -hmm. it's in, if it's in film sets, it's probably being sat there for a long time. And they probably yeah. only eat very little of it because it, it's not, you know, it's not shot in real time. And on stage, I suppose you, depending on what you're cooking, it might stink up the theater, depending on how large your theater is. Because I mean, the, yeah. that that theater at the IRC was quite big. It was a thousand theater, but you know, at the end of at the end of the week, you you know, you did smell kind of off food. Mm. So how that might I... be, yeah. So I mean, that yeah, might be it, a reason. It, the lights on a film set are very hot, aren't they? So. They'd probably, depending on what food you have, it yeah, might affect the it could go off of quite easily. Yeah. No, well, let me tell you that Ooh. it's a okay. continuity issue. It's a what issue? What? Continuity. Continuity. Oh, issue. Very okay. good, of course. Yeah. So, like yeah. on stage, it would be like health and safety. I imagine. Mm, I mean, yeah. like on budget show, I've been in a budget show where we had like the same sandwiches for the entire week, and it was just more and more disgusting. Oh, that's grim. Um, Mm, but, yeah, but you know, but but I mean, if it if it has a bit of mold on it, just think of it as penicillin. <laughs> you know. I mean, we spent a lot of money uh, buying uh, blue cheese. 
That's yeah, you true. get it for That's free. True. Mold, mold, mm-hmm. mold, mold, mold. Um, and also, uh, Kevin Shen has volunteered because he's very experienced uh, film and TV actor. He said, easy uh, is terrible for sound. That makes sense too. Because your mic up. Yes. Mm. Of course. Um, I mean, I'm fast. I have to say, I'm fascinated by food in film and the way, like, when I'm watching things, how often people don't eat, but also not just that they don't eat because it's difficult for continuity and because it's annoying and it's not real food, but also that the plates are full at the end of a meal. Yeah. Often in American stuff, I find that really interesting. It's yeah. Like you're not supposed to actually eat stuff. I think. Seems to Weird. be a message. Yeah. Yeah, you can say you're hungry, but then you can only eat a little bit, and then it has, and then you're like, "Oof, so full." That's not I want to like, pay more that. attention now. You yeah. should like, especially American series and sitcoms. It's, I, it's really interesting to me. The messages. Oh, apparently Brad Pitt eats in every scene. Again, Ooh. some Kevin Chen. Hungry actor. Wow, that's <laughs> impressive, Kevin Chen. You know. Right. Oh, wow. What was I watching recently? Where. They were eating ice cream and they were, you could see them kind of eating it. And I was thinking, how are they doing that? Like, how are they, presumably it's not ice cream because it's not melting, but also continuity wise, that must be a nightmare or were they just pretending to eat? Maybe. I don't remember what it was, so I can't. Yeah. Questions, questions, questions. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, it depends <laughs> on like the budget of thing. Like candles are another thing that's like a nightmare. Oh, nightmare, <laughs> yes. Candles, cigarettes. Mm. Gosh, yeah, you don't, you, you don't think of these things. Well, one doesn't think of these things in, in theatre as much, I suppose. No. Because it all happens in relatively real time. Yeah, yeah. I did have, well, actually, where was I? I was in Keswick and I was talking, a stage manager had to deal with eggs every show and she, they had to like empty eggs. And apparently, and I can't believe this is true, that the quickest way to empty an egg is to suck it out. Uh, I can believe that. Yeah, I can believe that. Mm-hmm. Is that is, 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 uh, that's, that's the thing that I wonder whether that's where that phrase comes from. Yes, I think it, yeah, I think it probably is. Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, this poor person, this amazing slash pitiable stage manager had to suck eggs aye, aye, aye. every day. <laughs> To prepare for the show and I was like that is just disgusting mm. yeah so people out there who don't work in showbiz the kind of things we do for you <laughs> Sarah thought for the stage I know, I know just just remember that just remember that and petition petition the, the, the politicians to give us money yes support mm, I'm not sure, I wouldn't go that far <laughs> <laughs> come on you know we're looking at the death of a <laughs> potentially hopefully not but you know scary <laughs> right but so yes. we've got to wrap up um that's it's gone it's so quick but yeah, it's quick. Quick. i know right yeah it's like wow we're badly spoken about food <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, well time flies but like we should like hang out on zoom and like catch up we totally should you know, we, however, you know, very did. soon we can do a socially distanced meet anyway. Oh, that's true. That's so, true. You know. yep. so yeah. Yeah, because we should do that. Mm, yeah. Mm. Come and see. I, come and see your puppy. There are no, but wait, wait. There are places in Chinatown that are open for food now. Mm. Are they? Mm-hmm. For takeaway. For takeaway. Yeah. Um, and so good. we can go and go and support Chinatown that was hit really hard by the whole coronavirus yeah. thing, mm-hmm. and yeah. then like catch up. Let's do that. Yeah. We shall text we- each other. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm not promoting unsafe behaviour. Mm, no, we're only doing what everyone else is doing, and yeah, what everyone else is going to do. Yeah, that's not necessarily the best way to live life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's it's we're we're being we're being told we can. I mean it's mm-hmm. one one or more is what they're saying now, right? It's not even two meters from the fourth of July. So one or more. And uh, you know, pubs are opening, so why not rest? I, well, I refuse to talk about the virus on this show. <laughs> yeah. I just exactly. want to acknowledge what Caroline said about um uh, what's her name? Marianne eating a half a calippo in normal people and then putting the wrapper on the floor. Yes, I've forgotten that. That was very stressful. I agree. Oh. Mm. Yes. Gosh. 
crazy. Half a clipper and then putting it back in and then putting it on the floor. Yeah, I think so. That's pretty it was, Yeah, they were in his bedroom. That was, that was, prob that may have been the scene I was thinking of because I don't think it was a calippo. It was, um, it was a, a lolly on a stick. And they did eat, that's, I think that might have been the scene I was thinking of. And it was very like, why are there no drips? And why, <laughs> like, how are they eating it? And what's going on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thanks for your shout out to my moustache, Caroline. <laughs> right. So wait. Um, I usually uh, give finish people... with a song. No, I well, I could finish with a song. Oh, oh come on then! I'll let's do a song for Vic. Oh, Vic, <laughs> your beard is so nice and weird, and your head is nice and round. <laughs> Oh Vic, we like your face, and and soon we'll meet some place, and we'll catch up all around. Woo! Excellent. Look at that. That's. I mean, come on. <laughs> what more can I ask for on a Wednesday <laughs> evening? <laughs> Okay, everyone, stay safe. Um, we've been Vera and Adrian working from home. And if you would like to support the Omnibus Theatre, who is um, producing and supporting us during this time, then uh, click on the donate button and send them some pennies or pounds. And uh, they do a great job supporting artists yes. from all sorts of communities, um, especially marginalized folks. And uh, we love them very much. Also, we will see you next week. Yes. And what is next week? Next Oops. week is Books Week. Books week. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye. Right, Bye. Bye.